You may have watched the movie, but that doesn't mean you can now ace a book report on the source material. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 biggest differences between Annihilation, the book, and the movie. Uh, you have a journey through a landscape and it gets progressively strange. <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're taking a look at how Jeff Vandermeer's novel differs from Alex Garland's 2018 film adaptation. Since we'll be delving into key plot points, a spoiler alert is in order. I need to know what's inside. I could save him. Number 10, The Southern Reach. Annihilation is actually book one in Vandermeer's Southern Reach trilogy. Southern Reach is the name of the secret organization trying to unlock the mysteries that lie within Area X. In the source material, we're given more information on Southern Reach, which helps to distinguish it from all other governmental agencies in popular culture. The book most notably explores how the team tasked with investigating Area X has been programmed by the agency. Garland's screenplay puts less emphasis on what goes on behind the scenes at Southern Reach, instead focusing more on the inner workings of Area X. Southern Reach is really nothing more than a footnote in the movie. This used to be the headquarters of the Southern Reach before the Shimmer swallowed it. Number 9, Area X, aka The Shimmer. The Shimmer is a sort of phenomenon. They don't know what's happened to all of the people who have gone in and haven't come back. In the book, the public is well aware of Area X's existence, deviating from the movie where this quarantine zone is top secret. Natalie Portman's character doesn't even learn about Area X until her husband returns from a highly classified mission. The film only briefly references this mysterious setting as Area X via title card. Instead, the characters call it the Shimmer, a term that never appears in the source material. The movie takes several other liberties with Area X, or the Shimmer. Not only does Garland play around with time, but he also throws in mutated animals like a massive alligator and a bear-like beast, both absent from the book. <laughs> Number 8, The Biologist's Husband. Did your husband contact you at any point while he was away? No. In both the Annihilation book and movie, the biologist's husband returns home from a mission, although it's later revealed that this is actually his doppelganger. The book suggests that the biologist and her husband had a very strained relationship. In the movie, however, many of the flashbacks are dedicated to Lena and Kane embracing their love, although in her husband's absence, it's revealed that Lena turned to a colleague named Daniel for comfort. This affair wasn't present in the book, and the biologist doppelganger is called Ghostbird in the books, but not in the film. Why did my husband volunteer for a suicide mission? Number seven, mutations. As we go in, we start discovering that things are just mutating. Area X is a fairly vague setting in Vandermeer's novel, requiring readers to use their imagination to fill in the blanks. Since film is a visual medium though, Garland offers more details, while still keeping the setting clouded in mystery. As mentioned before, the film depicts the Shimmer as an otherworldly zone crawling with mutated creatures. We actually get to see these brutal beasts kill certain characters in the film, whereas the book kept their deaths a tad more ambiguous. Oh, and those creepy bushes that manifest to look like humans? They were nowhere to be found in the book, but were a haunting highlight of the film. Check this out. The mutations. They're everywhere. I've never really seen anything like it before. Radic! Something here is making giant waves in the gene pool. Number six, the team. In this, I think you get to see five very different women have varying degrees of fearlessness. Adding to the novel's vagueness, the team members sent into Area X are never referred to by name. They're merely known as the anthropologist, the biologist, the psychologist, and the surveyor. There's also a linguist, who quickly withdraws from the expedition. Meanwhile, the film gives each character a name and also switches up some of their professions. Natalie Portman's Lena is a biologist, and Jennifer Jason Lee's Ventress is a psychologist. But Gina Rodriguez's Anya is a paramedic, Tessa Thompson's Josie is a physicist, and Tuba Novotny's Cass is a surveyor and a geologist. What's more, the film gives everyone slightly more background, and in some cases, entirely new character arcs. And to see women just taking control of their destiny, I think that's gonna be very empowering for women, and it's pretty kick-ass for men. Number five, writing on the walls. Jeff's book has this very, very powerful, strange atmosphere. It's beautiful. While exploring Area X in the book, our protagonists come across strange writing on the walls, equally cryptic and religious. Where lies the strangling fruit that came from the hand of the sinner? While reading these words, the biologist inhales spores that instigate her change. The being that wrote these mysterious messages is dubbed the Crawler, and is eventually confronted in a tower. Both the Crawler and the text it leaves behind are further explored throughout the Southern Reach trilogy. 
In the movie, however, the words on the walls and their significance are essentially left on the cutting room floor. I wasn't really looking for someone to do an ironclad faithful adaptation. I was looking for something that was interesting that would surprise me. Number four, the mission. Can you describe its form? No. As we noted previously, the biologist's husband plays an important role throughout her character arc in the book and film. However, her motivations for venturing into Area X differ quite a bit. In Garland's movie, Lena's husband is put on life support after returning from the Shimmer. Lena believes she can find a cure for her dying husband by studying this danger zone. This strays from the novel, where the biologist believes her husband is already dead. Thus, her reasons for embarking on this dangerous mission are harder to get a grasp on. In either case, though, she's a woman desperately seeking answers. You need to know what's inside. So do I. Number three, hypnosis. What does it mean to be human and what does it mean to encounter the unknown that are very much in the book? In Vandermeer's novel, the psychologist uses hypnosis to take control of her group, unbeknownst to them. With the exception of the biologist, everyone can be sent into a hypnotic state with the trigger words, consolidation of authority. The psychologist can then force her team to do certain things they normally wouldn't. Most notably, annihilation is the trigger word to make a team member commit suicide. Despite playing a huge part in the book, hypnosis is never even brought up in the movie. In due course, the entire meaning behind the title is changed to instead imply that what rests within Area X will lead to an act of annihilation. That mix of beauty and terror that is in the book is also in the movie. And I think it's very effective. Number two, the tower. You know those words on the walls we brought up earlier. Well, in the book, the team first discovers them after traveling down a spiral staircase that descends into the ground. Where other team members refer to this as a tunnel, the biologist, for some reason, labels it as the tower. This tower doesn't exactly appear in the movie, although the climax does bring Lena to a lighthouse with a big hole in the floor. While Garland does work a lot of ideas from the novel into this sequence, he still cuts out one of the source material's most substantial plot points. Number one, the ending. If you were hoping to see the whole Southern Reach trilogy adapted to the big screen, you might be in store for a little disappointment. Rather than acting as the first chapter of a new film franchise, it's clear that Garland set out to make a standalone picture with his take on Annihilation. Where Vandermeer's novel left room open for two sequels, Garland's film wraps the story up as the shimmer vanishes. At the same time though, Garland still leaves us on a note that's ambiguous and unsettling. So while there are many differences, the ending still very much captures the spirit of its source material. We begin in the world we know, and we end in a world we don't know. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and subscribe for new videos every day.